Thank you for staying with us on this beautiful, beautiful Thursday. And let me say a very special good afternoon to Vibro the Third, who is never late. He's always here on time. I just had some things that I had to drop in. So forgive me for taking away some of your time. Solidarity Rally is coming up. And this is, of course, uh, put on by the faithful nationals in Antigua and Barbuda. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Good afternoon, Dave. Good afternoon, Antigua and Barbuda. So nice to be here as usual. Yes, the Solidarity Rally is tonight, this evening, I should say, 7.30, going till 11 o'clock, and we'll be right there on Tweet's Corner. Um, amalgamation of the United Progressive Party, True Labour, the Movement, the AWU, and Concerned Citizens. So I am here just to encourage all the faithful nationals to come out and to listen to some very important speeches because they do have um, weight to them. It's not about us getting up on the, the platform and making noise or cursing somebody. We have a lot of weight, weight to our, our speakers and we have a lot of information that we want to get out to you. There are a lot of things going wrong here in Antigua and Barbuda. If we as citizens don't get together and inform ourselves in a democratic society, then they will never be solved. And the way to do that is to be informed, is to come out to public rallies and to support a cause which means well for Antigua and Barbuda. Um, it's all about the laborers. You know, this is Labor Day weekend coming up, so it's really focused on the laborer. Mm -hmm. That's where my family comes into the history of Antigua and Barbuda with fighting for the laborers. And I believe the laborers are getting shortchanged by this administration and the faithful ash nationals will be out there fighting for justice for the average human, average Antiguan. What are some of the topics that you guys will be focusing on this evening? Boy, mm. Dave, mm. there's so many topics, there's just not enough hours for the public rally to touch on them. I guess the main will be with the global ports. Um, global ports again? Global ports has to be again. Mm, okay. It's still out there. I mean, I believe Mr. Love will re really be handling the part about the, the legal action that has been taken in the courts that just reported the last 48 hours. I am going to more, be more like a scattershot. That's my speech really tonight. I think there's so many issues I want to touch on a little bit of some of the main issues. Remember, we still have e-book scandal. We have a government that is, has not been able to implement one of the main promises of their manifesto in 2014 what to issue e-books to the students in the public schools to assist them, to make them better informed and m more um, familiar with the technology of e electronic education. And that has not been implemented properly. So they've gone from cannot issue e-books that work to going to start a university in September. I don't know how you can be such a miserable failure at issuing an e-book to a student for the last four or five years, since 2014, but now you're saying you're going to open up a university? It's not even a college, you know, Dave, where they have one or two business, law, medicine. A university has several colleges under it. And that is my fear that... You've gone for the whole hog. You've gone for everything. We're not talking about piecemeal. Start one college or one discipline, two disciplines, and gradually, incrementally improve what you can offer the students in the various fields. You've gone from zero to offering everything at a, at a university level. My main concern, I left Antigua when I was 11 years old, you know, I keep telling you so, and I grew up in New York City, and I remember they had that, that university, Baruch College, yeah. Remember they lost their accreditation sometime in the early 90s, you know. There was mm -hmm. all kind of confusion up at Baruch College where the students who were already matriculated had what they thought were degrees, found out that they didn't have degrees. They weren't valid any place. Yeah. They and were then, not accredited any place. And then the ones who were still matriculating, mm -hmm. they had to change schools so that they could go and get a proper degree. Yeah. So knowing that as somebody who was in university at the same time, I went to St. John's University, Queen's Campus, um, I fear when some, the Prime Minister comes and says, jump high or jump low, we open in a university in September. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Four walls and a roof does not make a university. Four walls and a roof makes a dwelling space. So if that is what he believes, that you just 
put together, get Sammy Lumber on them boys. We go put up a house. Sammy Lumber still exists? <laughs> no, man. It just, the name that I'm familiar from the past. When, okay, granted, when yeah. my grandfather wanted some, something, Billy, he called Sammy, Sammy Lumber. Yeah, call Sammy Lumber. We go put up some, some, something for him. Mm. So it's not, it's, not, it's not about calling Sammy Lumber, put up four walls and a roof, and then you call it university. I am worried about the accreditation that is going to attach to this school. But if it's landed, wouldn't it be part of the UWI? Well, that is the whole thing, but we heard them say they hold on, wait for a second, let us look at this and how this is going to affect them. You understand? These other countries, Barbados, Trinidad, and I suppose Jamaica. But um, that being said and done, I believe even the, the tone that has been taken from these other leaders in these other Caribbean islands has been a response from what, how the, the, the Prime Minister himself has conducted himself. Because you remember with the Scotia, Scotia Bank business, it's like, Oh, it's already sold, but I am not going to issue an investiture order. So I guess Trinidad or Barbados is saying no investiture order, no you fourth landed <laughs> campus of university of the Western. But it's not a joke and matter because uh, irrespective of what may be said out there, Dave, uh, it, may, it may be uh, better. It uh, may be better before you go ahead and you, you, you work your tail off for four years and don't get nothing. Mm. It's better you take time. And walk fast. That is mm. what I advise. And then you have but the other, university you have the backlash, you know. is not a bad idea. No, it's not a bad idea. Yeah. But I'm saying, mm. from my experience, from what happened in America with Baruch College and mm. several others, not the only one, but that's the one I remember at the same time because I was going to university at the same time. It may be better that they just hold off and get it started out before they go the um, um, half baked to go and sort of what's really going to happen. I don't like the whole thing. You're going to a school where what you're saying, jump higher, jump low, and we're going to get somebody else to, to, to back the school or some other institution. These things have to be accredited. These things have to be affiliated with other universities where you can go and earn credits elsewhere and they will accept them. That's what I know from my, from my university college experience. I've never heard any, any St. John University or any of these other schools that will open up other brands uh, run into a problem and say, jump high, jump low. <laughs> We're going forward no matter what. You're getting the politics involved where it should be academia. The academics should be the ones at the forefront to sort this issue out and the technicians. But anyway, in Antigua, we do things differently. So the yes, faithful David. nationals are on tonight. The faithful nationals yeah. on tonight. And, and, and those are some of the issues that, were, that you guys will be focusing on. The e-book on. scandal, the global port matter, the same, um, the, 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 the murders were released by the Attorney General. That is still on the agenda to it still talk is? about. Of course. We don't know how you're going to let out the murder and then put him back into jail. <laughs> that, <laughs> those things have not been solved? Those things have not been solved up to today. Mm. And that's why I say I, I believe I will leave the so global was there was the report that came out of uh, the, the mid uh, cabinet pertaining to that? Yeah. When there's supposed to be some investigation and should have a final of what took place? and. The Labour Party, when they investigate matters, they will tell you an investigation is taking place, but that will be the end <laughs> as, as far as the, any actual substance of an investigation. You remember the, uh, when the, this administration got into power in 2014, they were supposed to do an investigation of the Wadadley power plant to find out if the engines were old or new. They said that because they, they campaigned, you, did, they campaigned, you, did, you they were the one that did the interview with the they, prime minister. I remember I saw they, it on, on um, YouTube. Yeah, they campaigned, of course. Uh, well, I went to jail for it. Yeah, it's you know, I should have remembered those things, you know, because my buddy was here with me and he was telling me um, he'd give me his salary or mm. for the month if I could name one thing. Mm. And then I remember, I heard and then that. I heard, and I and had a you, they, they, they arrested you for picketing, you were one man picket. I against the United Progressive two, Party. Two man, two man picket. It was Jim you, Galloway, the late Jim Galloway, and myself. So, um, so the folks were picketing against UP, UPP? Yeah, we picket against everybody. We just call a spade a spade. Mm. And I remember you had an interview on ABS yeah. with the Prime Minister mm -hmm. where he said that there was going to be an investigation that was done under the Wadadley Power Plant. But today, we don't know what the terms of reference are. And we don't know who is doing the investigation. So is there an investigation that's going on with the power plant? That's what he told you. Yeah, he told me that. that I'm was asking you four know. years ago. But I'm asking you if there was... But Dave, if, I can't even get to the investigation. I'm just saying, who is doing the investigation? So what, is there an what investigation the, going on? What are the terms of reference? We've never heard the terms of reference. Is it going to only be limited to Antigua? Or what happened in Antigua? Is it going to be international? What happened in China where the plant was, was made um, in Germany? We've never heard the terms of reference. 
right? In addition to that, we don't know who is doing the, the investigation four years after the Prime Minister told you that an investigation was going to take place. So that is far as I know when they say they're going to do investigations, I will hold them. Look at what happened to the word Dudley Power Band. Veer and Jim go to jail and an investigation is still to determine whether the Wadadley power plant is old or new. But I don't think the, the generator is actually working now. Mm. That is the state of Antigua and Barbados. So don't, 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 um, don't hold your breath when they say they're going to do an investigation. That's the, the rule of thumb that I operate on, as I probably be dead by now, most likely. You got your money yet? Buddy? <laughs> that is a work in progress. I am very optimistic. <laughs> but, you know, I'm optimistic when I hear the Prime Minister say that we, we're living in an economic powerhouse. I say, what? They have money. And he then, said we're living in one, or he's hoping for us to become a political... But he said so four, four years no, ago? No, but, but no, I, I just want to make sure when we speak of whatever uh, one listen, says. He I'm, says Antigua and Barbuda will become... An economic powerhouse. He didn't say we are an economic powerhouse. Oh, so that might be why they haven't paid me as yet. They're not there I yet. No, <laughs> but if it's become, it means we haven't got there as yet. Listen, if I, I you tell them you're going to do something, and you're already in your second term now, and it hasn't, it doesn't appear on the horizon. Mm -hmm. I am taking it that we have not arrived as yet, and we will never arrive under his regime. But when you hear that we are going to, we have a uh, liat that is broke, and we can't afford it. When you hear we have a University of the West Indies that we cannot afford, I have my doubts about this ever coming off. When you hear that, you remember the referendum last year, the 6th of November, that by January of 2019, that the government was going to build a new prison. And then they said, well, you know, they're going to have these, these trailers with yeah. air conditioning in them, and those are supposed to be here by March. And now we are the 2nd of May. I cannot put my faith in these people. You see what happened? A lot of people, uh, you wonder why slavery lasted for, for so long. And I believe it's down to the gullibility of black people. Mm. We accept what is, what is the reality. And we do not challenge or we do not um, hold them accountable for what is happening. But I do believe that the Faithful Nationals is a real start to the change in Antigua and Barbuda politics, whether it's red or blue or green or true labor or DNA. I'm asking my fellow Antiguans and Barbuda, please stand up and be counted and call a spade a spade. I would like to pull the Antiguan who was listening to this radio back to 2005. You remember they had the DEFCON um, secret negotiations? Mm -hmm. And that was on the United Progressive Party. I remember here in Max Hurst, I remember hearing Malvin Joseph. I remember I, I hearing Tani Rose on the radio speaking out about how don't the citizens of Antigua and Barbuda know they are the ones that are the employer and the employees are the servants and they don't know how what money they are saving or what money is being spent when they went to negotiate with the Italians for the DEFCON deal. Now we're in 2019 and just a month and a half ago they tell us they negotiated with the the, car, car, the cruise, cruise line. lines mm -hmm. and it's such a great deal it's such a good thing that they have done for Antigua and Barbie and we should all be happy now but you're not going to know because there's a non-disclosure agreement in place so how can it be wrong then and it is right now and the same people on the radio the Max Hurst the, the, the Tanny Rose the Malvin Joseph and they have nothing to say about a non-disclosure agreement where it is affecting our, our main and only industry. And they are comfortable saying, we should know what is in the deal. What is it? Kentucky Fried Chicken, Dave? It's like the kernel. It tastes good, the fried chicken, but you don't know about the secret spices. Something is wrong. Something is wrong here. This is not Kentucky Fried Chicken the government dealing with here. You're dealing with my future, more important, my children's future. So I want to know what is in that agreement. Because remember, it all started this man-made crisis with the cruise line. started when the Prime Minister called them that they told on a statement that they were exploiting Antigua and Barbuda with the $25 um, head tax. And that they were a cartel operating out of Florida. They to raise the head tax now. I don't know what there is. And I'll wait, as I said with the Dudley Power Plant and all these investigations, I'll wait to see what comes off. I'm not holding my breath on anything because I don't know. Mm. All I know is there's a non-disclosure agreement. But he went to say that they're exploiting us. 
and the conditions were so grave against Antigua and Barbara and so um, skewed in their favor to now saying that everything is great, so we're no longer being exploited. That's the end of the story. That's how much he, he was a freedom fighter for, what, two months, two and a half months, from that meeting to everything is great, and you're not going to know what the, 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 the agreement says. I have a problem with that, and I believe that the faithful nationals have a serious problem with that, because if it was bad in 2005 with the DEFCON deal, it is equally just as bad 2090 with this non-disclosure agreement with the Caribbean cruise lines. But they've come to an agreement, uh, and the Global Port still has the, the entity. Uh, are they now owners of it, or there's still a time period as far as Global Port is I, concerned? I've heard talk. Mm -hmm. I've read articles about it, but at the end of the day, we don't see the agreement. So both parties can say whatever. Until you see what is on the dotted line, it's hearsay. So I don't know how much faith to put into that. It is not Kentucky Fried Chicken. It is not the secret spices. You like Kentucky Fried Chicken. I do love it. Who doesn't like Kentucky Fried Chicken? <laughs> right? And that is what I'm saying. They need to free up the secret ingredients, release the non-disclosure agreement, so mm. we can see it. They're acting like if it's the 14 secret spices. And I have a problem with that. I expect that from Kentucky Fried Chicken because you're paying for it and you say, okay, you can, I, can, I like how the chicken tastes, yeah. but I know I'm not so going so to be able to make it at home. So they monopolize the whole stuff. They yeah. monopolize it and yeah. they have it hidden away and, in some and, vault or something. And there's like other that. business entities out there that they're competing against. They're competing against. So, so they're protecting themselves. So, but this is different. This is completely different. You are my servant. I'm not going to buy Kentucky Fried Chicken here. You went to make a deal with people who exploited me. You come back and tell me that everything is great, everything is hungry dory now. It's so good that you don't need to know what we agreed to. Are you aware of when the development or when the new dredging or when this global port takes over uh, the port? No. I don't, I don't know the details. You see what happened? I have, as a lawyer, I have a problem. If you said you signed on on the agreement, you both signed the agreement, then it should be final. Mm -hmm. But then after we, we riled up and we've been having our protests, they went and said they changed the, from, from 30 years with the, the option of additional 10. Now it's supposedly um, 10 years now. But that's pressure from the faithful nationals. I believe so. I believe so. And, and just a bit of stupidity on the negotiations part, the negotiators part, mm. to go and give away your main industry exclusively for 40 years. However, they did say that the exclusivity is off and the, the length of time is off. But we but have legally, the, when you sign the document like that, where do you get the loophole to renege from that? No, you don't. It's on the other party to say, okay, then we will, um, we will, are willing to amend the agreement. But if Global Ports wanted to carry them to court over what was originally signed, they would win. Now, what is it also that the shares can be offered to Antigua and Zimbabwe? I believe we threw that out there also because I had a friend who was down here last month or so, and he was, he's from Bahamas, Hendrick mm -hmm. Smith, and he showed me one of the flyers from, um, what was it? It was um, um, Paradise Island or something, Harbor, where they're actually developing the Where Global line. Port is yeah, developing. and the shares were being offered to the, the ordinary Bahamians. Mm -hmm. So that is what we put that out there. And then they said they're going to be able to own shares. I don't believe them. Really, I believe that is just something to pacify the, the Antiguans that they go own something. But even that, how we, we don't see the contract. So you say so. What am I supposed to base it on? On the Prime Minister's word, he told you that he was going to have an investigation of the Wadadley Power Plant over four years when he used to work for ABS. I have it. On, <laughs> I have it on um, YouTube. You know, that's what I say. I say what? This is big things because it if that affects me personally. I yeah. was beaten. <laughs> I, my rights were in fringe. I was brutalized by the police officers. I was behind bars for that, that whole scandal. Because and you were protesting it also. You were part of that. Yeah, we were protesting it. Jim and I and several others. Mm -hmm. You know, so... You were one man picketed over by the Chinese resident? No, I, I never picketed on my own. Okay. I've always been at so least... So why they call you Lone Wolf? Well, because all the picketers... But were you by yourself, by the, prime, <laughs> by the minister, by... 
PM Spencer's home. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. You were alone? No, I was never. I've never no? been on the picket alone. I've never oh. been on the picket. The group was called the Lone Wolf um, Protesters because I saw this week before we came. We didn't know what to call ourselves. We even got to call ourselves Faithful Nationals at one point. You know, back then we didn't know what to call ourselves. But then I saw the movie with Chuck Norris mm. and the way with Lone Wolf McQuaid, and then I said, Yo, <laughs> you remember when Lone Wolf jumped through the windshield and bust the man in the chest? Mm. So I said, Okay, <laughs> we'll be called the Lone Wolf. Protesters, okay. uh-huh. but then, but you were never alone. I was never alone. But Dave, when Labour Party started to promise everything, because they're getting some pressure from the Chinese and everybody else. When Labour Party start to offer all the, the the nice things in life to the fellow lone wolf protesters, mm-hmm. some were promised to be ambassadors. <laughs> <laughs> they ended up cleaning down at um, Heritage Clean, cleaning bathrooms. I asked them after after two thousand fourteen. I said, "Boy, Vera, Vera." If you only heard the things that we were promising. I so said, they actually promise? Yeah, they promised them. They, prom- they promised them a-, a lot. I mean, I personally was promised to be the ambassador to the United Nations and to be a, um, a, ch- what is it? a senator. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, we were supposed to go down to um, 46 North Street to speak with them. That was Kelton Dalson when Kelton was with us. Mm-hmm. So um, Chet Bean said, yeah, come down, Ch- um, Kelton, you and Vera come down to 46 North Street and speak to us. We lines out. So I said, speak to who? Speak. Well, Chet was the one that told himself that we were supposed to go down there and speak with them. I mm-hmm. don't know who them were. Mm-hmm. I suppose it's some leadership or something like that of the Labour Party. I say, Dalsa, I'm not going to know with you now. You ever see that movie, Goodfellas? Remember when that guy went in the room and then you see the, the grave, the, the, the whole dick fee? I <laughs> said, Dalso, Dalso, I watch Goodfellas, right? And mm. the man thought he was going to be made. Mm. And when he go in the room, he said, oh, Jesus, can mm. you see a hole in the ground? And yeah. then, pop, knock you over the head. So I said, before you all don't see the lone wolf again, I wonder where the lone wolf, <laughs> what became of the lone wolf? Let me just stop right here where I am. So you did not go? I didn't go. I don't believe that. So indeed, uh, he was supposed to be made a senator and the head of the um, the youth, youth, part, youth, youth arm of the Labour Party. Mm. I just think he's an old ton of mama guy. They just wanted to shut us up. I don't know how I'm going to be an ambassador in the United Nations and still fulfill my duties as, as a, a senator, senator in Antigua. In Antigua. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said, wait, 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 wait. We must, <laughs> we know you do them someday. No, someday. maybe you had to choose between one. I had a senator and ambassador. I heard both. You heard both? But then, you know, why they, they tell you anything at that point, you know. I tell you now, one of the ladies just promised to be an ambassador, but she ended up cleaning the bathrooms down at Heritage King. One of the ladies was part of... One of the lone wolf. She was the one that told me after the election, boy, Vera, they promised her everything, boy. <laughs> they really went after you hard. Everybody was supposed to be senator, ambassador, made this... Big job. Yeah, but you guys did not drown the fold. That's why you didn't get anything. Well, I didn't intend to go there because I, I, my mother didn't raise a fool. We take a break. Thank you for staying with us on this Thursday afternoon, the 2nd of May 2019. With me, of course, Vibra the 3rd. It's all about the Solidarity Rally this evening, and the rally takes place at Twaits Corner. Twaits Corner is 730 tonight. I'll be one of the speakers. I think there'll be at least 10 speakers on tonight. And um, we're, we're going into Labor Day weekend. We're going into Labor Day weekend. So I believe it's really the, the whole theme over all is solidarity with the laborers. Mm. And that is who the faithful nationals are really trying to fight for. And the injustice that is happening to them. You started the program and all by saying Vera is always here on time. Mm-hmm. My grandfather of the opinion that he always had to be as a prime minister early because it shows a weakness in your personality if you can't manage your own time to be there at the appointed time then how are you going to tell other people to lead other people to do their jobs so he thought it was about your personal a weakness in your personality to be late i was up there sometimes with him at tomlinson's after i did my first year. i spent three months with him before i went to read law in the united kingdom and I know his driver, Louis Senso, and his, uh, his aide, uh, Tasha, whatever you call them. I know those guys were going crazy because if Papa had to eat somewhere for 4 o'clock, 1 o'clock, he already calling them to come for him. Mm. <laughs> so they're like, yeah, we're on our way, we're on our way, we're on our way. I said, okay, I understand. And there was this constant battle every time he had an engagement because for some reason he feared be late. What do you remember most about, of course, uh, mm. Sir V.C. Bird? What I remember most about him, mm-hmm. well, most of my time was not spent with him as I got older. Most of my time was spent with him when I was a child out oh. at Fry's Hill because we lived with him. The Fry's Hill Fry, The Fry's Hill Estate. Mm-hmm. There used to be the, the old mm-hmm. house there. And what I do remember, my grandfather, is that, you know, one of the policemen, they took him out one night, you know. Police okay. what? One of the policemen that were gone now nearly took him out. 
Papa Bird nearly got shot. <laughs> Why? Um, he was coming into the gate late at night and he didn't identify himself. I believe they used to have a um a word, mm. a phrase that they had to identify mm. who Password. you were. Password. Yeah, this mm. was in the age where you WhatsApp the police and tell them who, who's coming. What you said this what? No. Oh, it was not the yeah, age. Yeah, it was not the age where you could WhatsApp <laughs> and say, I'm on my way. Don't worry, leave the front gate open. Uh. So the, the policeman was halt and identify. Mm. And Papa was in his own little world or whatever, and he just kept coming forward. The guy had the, draw, the gun cocked. I was ready to blast him. <laughs> It was close. It was mm. close. Yeah, yeah. That was one, one of my memories. I, I remember the first time I ever saw fear. In my, the only time I saw fear in my grandfather's face was how close he, he came to get shot that, at that point in time. Wow. Because not that I, I, I was a child. I, I, don't, I didn't recall seeing the event, but I was told mm. what happened and later on the next, the next morning. You could see he was shaken, basically shaken by what, uh, a, a tragedy like that, an accident like that. And it was... His fault where the, the policeman did his job. Mm. Hall didn't identify. And he, he didn't remember. He, he had to identify himself with whatever the, the secret word was or whatever. You know, that was one of, one of the memories. Another thing I do remember him laying on his bed up in Thomas and is where he told me about politics. He never told me you have to be prime minister, you have to do this. Nobody in my family ever told me that. What I do remember, my, my parents and my grandfathers really relating to me like Veer. You have not only the last name, but you have the first and the middle name, <laughs> right? So whatever you do, make certain when you come home, you have a profession that you can make your own way in Antigua and Barbie if you choose to live here. Because with a name like Via Conor Bird, some people may love you and embrace you, and then you have the others who hate you. For not for anything that you did, but, because but they of the blame name. you for what your father or your grandfather, or what Labour Party, or whatever the union did back whenever. And sometimes you even hear some people say, oh, I didn't love Papa Bird because Papa Bird teeth teeth two dumps off them tree and then grandmother tree and so you're like, what? Mm -hmm. People say, oh, no, 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 I kind of draw grudges so, so, for, for whatever reason. So I believe that's part why I just speak my mind because it's always been on my mind as a child what I was taught to always have a profession to make your way in Antigua and Barbuda. I mean, my true call in life is a musician. I went to the Brooklyn Music School and the Shiva Institute to become a classical pianist. That's mm -hmm. what I trained it up to the age of 19 and did um, composition and counterpoint with Daniel Rustin for, at the Brooklyn School of Music. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm a born Antigua and I wanted to come home. So I went down the path of being a lawyer. Mm -hmm. But um, people oh, they think that they're hurting me personally by saying I'll never make it into Parliament. Right? But why would they think so? I, I, oh, we are, we are third party and third parties don't succeed, so you never get in there. I was like, all right, at least they didn't, they didn't question my musical abilities. That's more of a concern to me personally, mm. right? Because that's what I, I was really training. And then 19, I decided to push to, I'd had a degree, in, did a degree in government and politics at St. John's University and then went and read law in, was it 1994? So... I'm a classical pianist, man. Maybe, I'll, maybe one of these days when I, 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 I knock off the rust, we'll have a fundraiser for Observer. That'd be good, a you classical, know. classical and, concert. And that'd be good. That'd be good. I've never heard you play it, you know. I, I used to play down here. We came home with the Brooklyn, um, the New York City Youth Chorus in 1988. Mm -hmm. yeah, I remember playing um, a Mozart sonata at the, the big church and the Methodist Hall and out at St. Stephen's. So you so. play well? Yes. So why, why don't you play anymore? I don't even have a piano. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be surprised how many musicians don't even have instruments. The instrument. Yeah, you'll be surprised how many don't even think. Mm -hmm. I, well, what I do remember, like after I practiced and I, I performed and so on, and you know, my grandfather, he was musically inclined mm -hmm. also. Because those who would know him would know, always remember him tapping his fingers because he was in the Salvation Army and used to beat his drums in mm. Port of Spain, mm. in Trinidad. Mm. So I remember when I gave my concert up at the big church, you know, and after, kind of, oh, everybody say you played well, everybody say night. So granddad looked at me and said, boy, you must have really had to practice hard to play so well. Mm -hmm. And he was the only one who realized how much effort it went into to prepare the piece to play. Mm. I said, okay, actually, he has some musical ability. He knows, he knows what it's all about, you know. But yeah, that's what I do remember about him. And just the, the fact that he was, he was always there, not physically present in your life. But you know, granddad was always there at some point in time if there was a problem, mm -hmm. you know. 
but I, I, I remember him at Frysill when he lost in, in 71. Because that's one seventy one, And I do remember him taking it on pretty well, you know. He took it on. There was a massive blow that he lost in 71. And he was laying down in bed all the time. He wasn't, he wasn't moving around as much. He took, it was a heavy, heavy burden on his shoulders, you know. And I remember my father and my mother and Daisy Samuel from Cedar Grove had to go into that room and tell him to get out of that bed. Or whatever is troubling you, you have to go go at it again. And luckily they were successful. They were successful. I do remember back in Friesel how the house used to get raided by the police very often. Dave. During, during the, the opposition time? Well, the during, time. When they were in the opposition? Yeah, yeah, I remember the house. They'd getting, raid the house for oh, what? Oh man, for we used what? to get raided. They were looking for guns. You remember back in the day um, you had um, the pamphlets in them because you, you they had raised the price or the cost to license your newspaper and it was, it was too high to to actually pay that license. Mm. So you had to have your propaganda material because you had to find who was the editor and all that stuff and nobody could afford the license. So what we used to do is to roll them up and put them in pipes that were just standing by the chicken coop. And then we would put them on the chickens, on the chicken coop also to hide <laughs> the, the pamphlets. And what we used to do back in the day, and this is before Gaston Brown's time and most, uh, most of these other younglings in the Antigua Labour Party. What do you call them? These younglings. I'm talking about back in 71, 72, 73, 74, 76. Mm -hmm. What I remember, what we used to do is take the, the, the paraphernalia because you couldn't operate your newspaper. And what we used to do is go down by, by Deepwater Harbour where the tugboats and when the cruise ship was heading out the harbour, We'll actually send them up to the cruise ship. My mom and Miss Henry and so on, Connie, the company. So you guys were selling it to the tourists? Yeah, they actually sent back down money because they actually wanted oh. to know to know what was happening. That's how the Labour Party used to help to fund fund the the, the opposition. They had you should send it up, you used to have some little little conveyor thing. You send up the papers and they send back down the money and the uh, the top mm. and so on. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a little part of the the un, the unwritten history of the Antigua Labour Party where I am proud to say that I was there. And mm -hmm. this is before the world boss or the, the top dog or whatever they call him now. This is this is like at least twenty years before his time. This is when Labour Party was Labour Party. But you were a baby then? I was a baby. But, yeah, I, but I was born into Labour. So I didn't so I wasn't a, a just come. But 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 you're not with Labour anymore. No way. That's not that's not my, my um but what that's not my party. I don't associate with that. I don't ideologically it's just not what we were about. So, I don't want a part of it. As I said, they're not doing me any favors, you know. Labor Party, not one of them can say they did me a favor. Whether it is Lester or Gaston or Mulwin or Max or any of them. I never asked them for any favors, right? So, when I talk, I am speaking because my grandfather and my parents told me, make certain if you're going to live in Antigua that you have a profession because it's not only your last name that people are going to hate you for. It's the whole shebang. So tonight, remind us. Faithful Nationals will be right there on Twaits Corner. I think that is the intersection of the three constituencies, rural, south, St. Mary's, north, and city south, if I'm not mistaken. So that is where you really put on your biggest rallies and so on. So I'm hoping everybody will come out and to just be informed. Uh, Mr. Lover will be talking about the whole lawsuit against the global port, and I do pray by God that we are successful with it. But whatever happens, we will continue to protest. We will also be starting up our pickets again. We took a little break because of the, the Easter, Easter holidays and so on. And we had to respect and we had to pray for the faithful nationals to continue our fight. So part of the protest was actually in prayer over the Easter that you would give us the strength and the focused minds to continue on with our struggle for Antigua and Barbuda. Because it's not only about the picket. It's not only about the rally, but it's also the prayer that we need with God's um, providence to assist us to keep on fighting. Because you hear all kind of negative chatter about, I remember the last time we were here, they're saying that <laughs> we, were, we were picked in down on at Heritage, Thames Street, and the tourists saw that and went back on the boat. Mm -hmm. You realize what that is, Dave? That is one picket a week, three hours from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Three hours, one day a week, was too much of an economical drain on Heritage Key for us to continue. We're not saying we're picketing every day of the week, you know. And it's not even, when you say a day, 
Nobody pickets for 24 hours. Yeah, three hours. Three hours. We got to take and a break. And that is what they had a problem with. We got to take a break. Yeah, sure. The seriousness of uh, the fateful nationals, and of course, uh, forwarding all the things that we've heard or we've been hearing about. Yeah. And the things that are uh, com- uh, impacting us here in Antigua and Barbuda. The rally tonight, as part of the lab- Labor Day that's coming up. Yes. General thing you said the focus is on laborers, laborers, yes. folks who work in mm-hmm. this country. Yeah, what's the atmosphere as far as work is concerned in Antigua and Barbuda? Well, I see people you know, on the radio so much, and they, 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 they know me more by my voice than even by my sight. Or when they hear Weber, they think of a man who is six foot something. So they say, Wait, we know that voice, and then we can't be a bird. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So they hear the voice and so on, and people come to you and say, hey, you know, you have any work or anything like that? It's so hard out there. Even today, I just went to serve a document for a client of mine, and then a, a lady saw my social security saying, boy, we are having a hard time for any work. You go to the politician, next minute they tell you how you look so cute, you look so pretty. <laughs> and they, they're trying to make some moves on you, and then you fall flat, but you don't take, take on the advances. Those things still goes on? I just heard that this morning. I just heard that this morning on, on the corner of Long and, and Cross Street, to be honest with you. But, um, yeah, it's about the... the but if the, we're hearing of so much development in Antigua and Barbuda, yeah. and we're hearing that all of these things, we talk about the finances that came into Antigua and Barbuda with the CIU, yeah. we think about all the projects that has been spoken about in Antigua and Barbuda. And have not materialized. Well, some have, haven't they? Very little in, 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 when you take into account what we were supposed to have and what the reality is. Mm. Because you remember the, the Yida project was supposed to put $200 million into our economy. U.S., $200 million U.S. every year in our economy for the next 10 years. That is why they said they were going to put a billion U.S. dollars into Antigua's economy over 10 years. How many All, years is it going? Um, that's half, almost half the time. That's 2014, 2000, 2019. I don't know how much billions of U.S. dollars or hundreds of millions of dollars that the citizens think have gone into our coffers. But when you have a, you're supposed to go to CCJ, but in actual fact, we can't afford the CCJ. You're talking about starting the University of West Indies. We can't afford the University of the West Indies. We said we're going, they said they're going to build a new prison. Started January this year. We can't af- obviously. Was they it can't January this year? The uh, Cutie Benjamin, the Attorney General, leading up to the referendum last year, said that the project they had their um, investors who were going to start the building of the new prison in January of 2019. Then we heard by March it was containers, air conditioner containers that they were supposed to put up at the prisoners' farm. And that was supposed that to be... That project has started? I hear that there's some guys up there cutting some bush and putting up some fence and sleeping on the job and relaxing and doing whatever. But there's no physical prison or retainer, halfway house or anything up there so far. So you wonder how... I mean, my problem is that you, you, you're rushing to do all these projects that you cannot afford. Something has got to give. And usually, nine times out of ten in mankind's history... It is always the poor that suffer when politicians overreach and can't balance their finances. And that is my biggest fear for Antigua and Barbie heading into this Labor Day weekend. The laborers need to be better protected and looked about. And I don't believe it is being done under this present regime. But anyway, getting back onto a, a lighter point, I didn't really finish the story about when the police used to come and raid us out of Fries Hill. Mm. For some reason, because when they used to raid our house, mom and dad used to have four kids. But it was a fifth kid, but he was too young. He's a baby. So they, mm. For some reason, they used to have us line up in, in mom and dad's bedroom when the police were checking the house. But for some reason, the police came, they always went to my sister's room and they always kept searching through her panties. You know when the little kids have the day of the week panties? Mm. The policeman always stuck on Wednesday for some reason. Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> Every time he's looking for paraffin Nalia, mm. propaganda. The man got from the sister panty and them and stuck on Wednesday, lifting it up and looking around it. I don't know what's, what was going on. It was very strange. <laughs> you know, you look back there and you just have to laugh. It's a, a traumatic experience to experience people coming in the house and looking for something 
that isn't even where they where they think it is. Mm-hmm. But then when he's coming to look for your sister's palace, were they, were, were they looking for those things that you guys were taking to the tourists? Yes, because it was illegal. You remember they had the, the Antigua Times newspaper. I that was not living in. I was not in Antigua. So well, that's like a baby. Day every, or we, we, I'm just no. I'm just saying, you know, but because uh, obviously these things happen. But to hear you yeah. speak about it mm-hmm. and the way you transported it. And the fact there were rig- where was the printing press for that? Hmm. Well, a lot of that stuff was printed. Was it part of the what, Antigua Workers Union? Workers Voice. Workers Voice. Workers, workers Voice. Voice was it part of the Antigua yeah, Workers yeah, Voice? Yeah, yeah. They printed the same. You remember, my dad was editing that for himself for years. You know. Yeah, but this so is what they, I wanted to know. They'll print, it, they print. They'll print it up. He was the one that did that. Um, remember that catchphrase they 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 used to, to have at the back of the paper? What was it? I, I can't remember what it is. Um, do you know, or is it true, or something like that? They used to have it at the back of the paper. I wouldn't be able to yeah, help you. But, um, I don't remember. To, to, they printed I it I remember up. the paper. Well, the well. Prop, yeah, it was very popular. It was the main paper back in the day. But The main? Um, it was the only paper? <laughs> <laughs> the main paper. The problem was a lot of them could not continue on. Mm-hmm. You remember they had the Antigua Times. I think that was run by Mr. and Mrs. Harris. And then they heard about this race in the, to license your newspaper. And it went on, though. and then people could not continue to print the paraphernalia and say where it came from because you had to give them all the information and pay this license. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he did what he had to do. It was illegal, but it was fun times. Even when them searched my, my sister's panties, day in, day out, every time they came, it was always that day of the week panty. It was very strange, but it always stuck in my mind. <laughs> Vera. <laughs> Vera. So tonight, you know, the, tonight is the night. Tonight is the night. We're Vera, definitely going Vera, apart from these, do you have meetings leading up to these rallies and what uh, with the Faith for National? Yeah, the leadership. Of do course, you guys have meetings? We meet every week. Every, every week. We, oh, you do. Yeah, we, we we can't just go forward and say, guys, just have a meeting and don't meet. We meet every week. So you lay the the, the things that are on. The table in Antigua and Barbuda, as far as discussions and some of the ongoings and things that are happening, and that, you, that's how you decide what you're going to do and when you're going to do when it. We're going to do it. Yes, definitely. Okay. Everything is is planned. Is so that? the global port. Now that of course uh, the ships are due to come back. Now that of course. Uh, uh, I they, won't, I won't hold my breath. No, no. Let me finish. And now that of course the price, uh, the individual will have to pay more. The to as far as the deal. Is concerned, and the reduction of the exclusivity. Uh, are those things printed? Are those official, or they just talk? We've heard news reports. We've heard government officials say so, but we've heard news reports that were done by you and government officials like Gaston Brown say that there was an in, going to be an investigation five years ago. Oh, you gone Dadley. back to that from Global Power, Report, but okay. Dadley. Power plan. Well, you're looking at me. I was just working, man. You were <laughs> just working, but it's recorded. He has said these things before. I don't even Once remember that. Once bitten, thing. twice shy. Trust me. Well, well, I, I did not even remember those I things. have the video, man. No, no, I'm not well. saying it's not. I mean, you know, if I'm doing an interview, I'm doing an interview. Yeah. And in today's world, you know, but uh, to say that I remember the exact interview, I don't. Yeah. You know, yeah. But I, I, I remember the stories about the power plant. I remember... Yeah the significant uproar that was going on in Antigua and Barbuda at the time as yeah. far as what was old and what was new and what was painted and people yeah, yeah. took pictures. I remember, I remember and, uh, going around, it was at 40 meetings they had that year. I think and, it was and you were part of that group? I was part of that, yes. Um, we went out there, Malvin Joseph and Max Russ, I watched Malvin, but look at Look at the grease in the power plant. Look at the grease. You mm. see the rust, the stain. Look at it on the floor. Say, so where are the rust now, Marvin? Marvin, what happened? You remember? They paint them over. I don't know what they did. They paint them over. They're still not working. Same old garbage that they have up there at um, Crabs. But I do remember also how Mr. Hurst and Mr. Joseph were complaining about that Magistrate of Procedure Act 2004. The act where when you have a, a, a violent, you're being uh, charged with a violent offense that you have to go to the high court to get bail. And I remember these guys, they were on the radio and they were so incensed, they were so appalled 
and how could the whole poor people's children up in prison and they can't afford the, 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 the high court bail and the length of time it takes to get the, the bail and the cost and we will have to do something when the Antigua Labour Party gets back into office we will have to change this because the prison is overcrowded and the way they just holding people and remands until they can get bail or if they can afford bail at the high court we have to do something so that these young people and permanently scarred by the, the, the uh, 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 charge where they may have been proven innocent. And I'm still here 2019 to see that Max Harris and Malvin Joseph and whoever else that were complaining have a muzzle on them out right now. You know, they have a, a bad dog and they put on that muzzle so you don't bite anybody. That was only bites when the UPP was in, in office. And they've simply put the, the, the muzzle back on their dogs and they remain quiet. It's all right. Poor people's children are going up in that horror house called 1735 anymore. Everything is good. We are moving forward into create the economic powerhouse that is Antigua and Barbuda. And everybody is pleased. I am not pleased. This country is, is, medi- is mediocrity. It is supposed to be the beacon of every other Caribbean island. We're not supposed to be on their level. We are superior people. We are the ones that purchased our own lands in 67. So we had the advantage over all these other islands. And when you hear them comparing Antigua, and you look around St. John's as a capital, and you see you, the, the sidewalks that people are going to fall into, and you see the, the, the unpaved roads, you say, where is all this wealth gone? If we are supposed to have that advantage that we own so much land, some of the, the, the most expensive land in the world, all those beachfront properties. When the history of the Caribbean is written, Dave, it's not going to be the richest Caribbean people and not the Jamaicans for their bauxite. It's not going to be the Trinidadians for their oil or the Guyanese for their gold and now their oil. It will be the Antiguans and Barbudans who had the most expensive real estate in the Caribbean, their beachfront properties. And that is... Land that was purchased for six million pounds sterling in '67, and that, when the value at today's rate is billions of dollars that Antigua has in real estate, we are one of the wealthiest people, or we're one of the wealthiest people in the Caribbean, and we have a capital that looks like the, you can't see anything after what my grandfather did in '67 to say we stand out. You look at St. John's. Is no better than Castries. Is no better than Port of Spain. Is no better than Georgetown. Is no better than Kingston or Kingstown. And you're going to come and tell me you are now going to create an economic powerhouse? I don't believe that foolishness. That is, people get satisfied when hearing foolishness, but I'm not one of them. Don't include me in that category. Thirty seconds to speak about the solidarity rally this evening. Solidarity rally, come out, come out. I have to go rush home now and go and prepare my speech. It will be very interesting. It will be very informative. And no matter what, after tonight is not the end of the faithful national. You're not going to hear us fall apart like true. Um, what do you call it again? Um, lone wolf. Lone wolf. <laughs> when they take out all the lone wolf and them. We will stand the test of time and remain focused and stand the course to get rid of this regime that is in office. Thanks a lot for being with us this afternoon, Via. Stay safe. Always a pleasure to have you with us and uh, keep on keeping on. See you all tonight. Take care. Bye for now.